Hi, today I'm back with another bullet journal plan with me for August. This is going to be my second setup in my new mid-year bullet journal. For last month's theme, I went with a very summery floral theme with a lot of neutral colors. But for this month, I wanted something a little bit more moody. While thinking of a theme for this month, dark blue kept popping into my head. So I started going through all of my supplies to see what blue ephemera I have. And I don't really have much, but I do have a Van Gogh washi tape set that was sent to me sometime last year by Aibi. And in this set, there are quite a few dark blue washi tapes. So finally, inspired by some of the ocean washi tapes, I decided on a lighthouse theme. For the August cover page, I had this image in my head of a lighthouse on the edge of a cliff with waves crashing against the rocks below and the sky a deep blue and grey from a storm brewing in the distance. I didn't have any lighthouse images or ephemera, so I used my watercolor paint to bring this lighthouse theme to life. Painting with watercolor is one of my favorite hobbies and I haven't done it in a while, so getting back into painting was really fun. For this painting, I got a few images off of Pinterest as inspiration and I drew a rough sketch on some watercolor paper. If you'd like to see my Pinterest board I used to plan this month's theme, feel free to go check it out. You can find a link to it in the description down below, along with a list of everything that I've used in this setup. For the lighthouse painting, I started off with just a light layer of colors. The thing with watercolor paint is that you really have to build your colors to help create some depth. Now, I'm definitely not a pro when it comes to painting, so you don't have to be scared to try it yourself. The reason I used separate watercolor paper for this painting is because I wanted to be able to layer underneath it on the page so that it would stand out more. But I definitely could have painted right on top of the page itself. The notebook therapy journals have a nice thick paper so it doesn't bleed through the paper easily. Of course that depends on how much paint and water you put on the paper because it can also start to buckle the paper, which is very annoying to straighten out. Also, if you use a different paper and you make a mistake, or should I say a happy little accident, then you can always scrap that one and try to paint one or two different pictures and choose which one is your favorite. As far as technique goes, for those that are interested, I used a wet on wet technique when painting the clouds so that the colors would bleed into each other. Once the background was done, I focused on adding in more detail to the lighthouse itself. For this, I made sure that the paint consistency was a little bit thicker, aka I added less water. This makes the paint more controlled when adding it onto the page, similar to using gouache paint. I just kept adding more layers to the lighthouse to darken the painting more. I didn't want it to look like a brand new lighthouse, but one that's older and has seen its fair share of storms. Lastly, I added a heavily diluted muddy brown layer on top of everything to really make everything look darker and older and in turn make it look a bit more moody. Now that the painting is done, we can get into how I set up my double spread cover pages. Firstly, I went in with this blue ocean pattern washi tape to cover the first page. I lined up the washi tape next to each other to create a solid pattern. After the first few strips, I changed the direction of the tape so that the pattern didn't look so repetitive. For the second page, I wanted to use a book page that I used while painting my lighthouse. There were already some blue watercolor marks on this page, 
which is fine because I'm going to add some more watercolor splashes later on. Before adding the book page, I added some more washi tape to the background, but this time I went with a different pattern or a different washi tape. This washi tape has some more waves on it, but in a different style. Now, as usual, in one of these scrapbook style setups, the main goal is to find the best way to layer my different ephemera. So at times, I will put something down and then get a better idea a little bit later and decide to change it. The nice thing about most washi tape is that you can easily remove it from the page and put it somewhere else where it fits better. Here I didn't like how the white paper was visible behind the vintage washi tape so I decided to remove it and add more of the water pattern washi tape under that. And then I took that same vintage washi tape and put it back on top. Finally, I added the star of the show, the lighthouse painting, on top of the washi tape. I made sure that the painting was just a little shorter than the page so that you're still able to see the washi tape underneath the painting. And I also added the book page on the other page. Now, as a warning, when I do these scrapbook style setups, I can sometimes be a little erratic. As inspiration strikes and the ideas start to flow, I might add one thing to the page, then another, and then go back to the previous thing to make a change or add something new. This usually happens when I really get into the zone and I completely forget that I'm going to edit this video later on and have things actually make sense. I guess this is just a little glimpse into my psyche. As the title of this video suggests, Van Gogh turned out to be a big inspiration for this setup, thanks to the washi tape. Van Gogh is quite famous for not only his artwork but also having made some beautiful and profound statements throughout his life. As I was going through a few of his quotes, I thought that this one was a perfect fit for the theme and I quote, I often think the night is more alive and richly colored than the day. Another quote I liked was, I dream my paintings and then I paint my dreams. But instead of adding in the second quote, I stamped the word dream on some brown craft paper and added it to the bottom of the page. For the scrapbook style of this setup, I tried to fill in the empty spaces with some more washi tape and different kinds of ephemera. Like I mentioned earlier, I did end up adding some more watercolor paint to the page by splattering dark blue and light blue paint all over the book page that already had some paint on it. This is one of my favorite techniques. I love how it looks and it's super fun to do. I think splatter and staining looks so good in journals. I also love using coffee or tea to make marks and stains on my journal pages. One thing that I found in my previous setup for July is that I rarely look at my cover page and I usually just skip right to the pages where I write every day and that honestly feels like a waste of space in my journal, which is sad because I often put the most effort into my cover page. So to help me actually use my cover page and not just forget about it, I added my monthly to-do list, my goals page and my social media post tracker to this month's cover page in the hope that I'll get to look at the page more often. Moving on to the next page, this first page is my habit tracker for the month. Starting off with a ripped book page for the background, I'm again using the same calendar style habit tracker as last month, tracking six different habits. Jumping over to the next page, this is my mood tracker. 
The lighthouse drawing was also inspired by an image that I found on Pinterest. When using a bunch of different ephemera, like I am in this setup, I like to have the main theme be the focus whenever you page through the spreads. For the heading I'm using a scrap piece of paper from a book and using my Sakura pen to write the heading. I kept these pages pretty simple with the lighthouse drawn in with my 003 and 005 liner pens. The lighthouse sits on top of a cliff and there, there isn't very much detail or any colour in this sketch because I will be filling in each of the sections with a different colour associated with a specific mood. Here I added some washi tape to the bottom of the page and this is where the heading will be. The background of this page was very empty so to fill in the space I used the same splatter method as on the cover page but here I tried to get it all over the page except on the lighthouse itself. So I used some washi tape to cover up the lighthouse before splattering the paint everywhere. The idea was to make the paint look like the night sky behind the lighthouse in an abstract way. So I loaded my brush with a lot of water and deposited it into the pools of paint already on the page. This causes the paint to bleed and kind of swirl around on the page. Next, I went back to my habit tracker page and using my distress ink, I went around the calendars and colored the whole page. To be honest, I think I got a little carried away with it and I ended up not really liking it, but I went with it anyways. Sometimes you just don't like how something turns out and that's okay. I guess I could have started over by covering it up, but instead I just went with it. After adding the washi tape and the new heading, I definitely like it more. Here are the last two monthly spreads in this setup before I move on to my weekly pages. The first spread is for my sleep tracker. I started tracking my sleep last month, but I must say I've been, I've been kind of guessing the hours of sleep. But I know that sometimes during the night we might wake up and not remember or have a light sleep instead of being in full REM sleep. I have a fitness watch that I haven't worn in a while that can track your sleep. I think I'm going to try to 
put that on in the evenings and see if I get a better sense of how many hours I actually sleep at night. If you track your sleep using your journal, a fitness watch or an app, please let me know if you have any recommendations on how to track my sleep in a better way. On the second page, I'm adding my financial tracker. Last month, I had it over two pages, but that's definitely unnecessary with this tracker. Other than that, this tracker basically has the same layout as last month's. It's been working pretty well for me so far. For the background, I used another book page and crumpled it up for a little bit more texture. On top of that, I'm just adding some more washi tape and layering everything. I wanted to add another little lighthouse to this page, so I used some of my tea stained paper to draw one. I used some extra dot grid paper to make three different tables. The first is my monthly income. Here I'll write down the date I receive any funds, the description, and then the amount and total at the end of the month. Next is my expenses. Here is where I'll write down all of my bills and payments that I make. I don't really track my smaller day-to-day -day purchases, like when I go to the bakery to buy bread or buy coffee on my way to work. I already have a little budget set aside for those things. Finally, I have my little savings here. I'll write down my starting amount, then how much I'm adding, and then the total. I'm finishing off these spreads with my sleep trackers heading. Next time I'll try and stay a bit more consistent and finish one page before moving on to the next. I really enjoyed my weekly pages from July. So I decided to go with a very similar layout this month. Using my stamp set, I'm stamping out each day of the week, starting with Monday. Underneath each day, there's a lot of room to write little daily journal entries and make notes as well. I'm adding some washi tape next to most of the days to bring in a little bit more of the theme. 
every weekly page looks almost exactly the same so I won't bore you with how I set all of them up but instead let's jump right into my flip through please remember to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future and as always I hope that you have a very crafty day.